Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brightenyourdays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building the habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day, bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. Today, I have a solo one for you where I'm going to be talking to you about my sacred yes. I recently decided that I was going to share my wisdom and guidance in the magical book called Divine Love. It's uplifting stories of radical self-acceptance, truth, and transformation. And it was a full body yes. The moment that I heard what this topic was and what I'd be sharing I was a full body from head to toe, like you've got to be in this, you've got to create something for this book. But what happens sometimes when we say yes to ourselves? Yes, you guessed it. Our minds decide and say, who are you to write in a book? You're not an author. You're not good enough to write in a book. Yeah, you have a podcast, but you've never written a book before. Like, how can you do that? Like, are you going to be able to do that? So these were the the things that were going on, the thoughts that were going on in my head after I decided that I was going to do this. With the thoughts in my head, the goodness of the work that I do and the work that I do with others is that I'm able to catch them and I'm able to catch them early. And when I'm able to catch them early, I'm able to transform them and make them a better feeling thought. So I had to change those beliefs for myself in order to get myself to a place where I was able to write and tell the story that was longing to be told. And so I had to go from, you're not an author, to I get to tell my story. I know how to do this. I've already done this before. My message is my purpose. My pain has informed this work that I do today. And I matter. My story matters. And I had to think of all the people that I'm going to influence on the process. All the people that are going to get to read this and they're going to see their story. They're going to see themselves. They're going to expand and grow and release and let go of things just by me saying yes to telling and sharing my story. So in this book, I write a letter to our inner child, to my inner child. And it focuses on my immigrant journey And all the lessons that I've learned along the way that's allowed me to love myself, allowed me to use my voice, allowed me to start this podcast, to start my coaching business, all the things that I had to go through in order to be the person that I am today. And so the story was that every day I made it a practice that I had to write at least one page. And each day I was writing a page and the story wasn't coming out the way I thought it would. Like I had a vision for how I was going to tell this story and it just wasn't coming on paper the way that I thought it would. It wasn't making sense the way I thought it would, but that was how it needed to be. I had to write all this junk, all the crap that was on my heart. I had to get rid of all the mind drama. I had to put it all to paper before I was able to get the story that came through me so effortlessly the moment that I was in a surrendered state. I had to write what was coming through, even though it wasn't making sense, even though I didn't understand it in order to get to the place where it was something that I wanted to share, something that I felt proud of. And I had to keep going every day. I had to push myself. I had to tell myself that this is the process. This is part of the process. And I didn't do it alone. I have 20, I think we're at 22 beautiful souls that are writing in this book. And so I had an army of beautiful women that are two telling their story, two sharing their truth. And we got to link arms and really be there to support each other. So I had to be comfortable 
raising my hand and asking for help, letting it be known when I felt stuck. When I said, it doesn't make any sense. In one of the calls, I was saying, my story doesn't make any sense. And just voicing that and getting it off my heart and out, it was received in a way that I've been where you are. I've written in multiple multi-authored books and that's part of the process. Sometimes it doesn't make sense at first. You have to just keep going. Eventually you'll land at a place that it makes sense. And that message was exactly what that part of me that was in fear needed to hear that it's part of the process. It's part of the journey. And so I came on here today to share the message with you that your beliefs can make or destroy your life and getting that awareness piece of catching what the beliefs that are running you, finding the beliefs and the thoughts in your head that aren't serving you that are telling you that you're not good enough, that are telling you that you will never amount to anything, that are telling you you're playing safe, telling you that you're lazy, telling you you can't do the thing. All those thoughts are BS. The belief systems running through your head, they're not serving you. They may have served you at one point in your life and kept you safe, but they are not serving you in this now moment, especially in 2023. We're here for expansion. We're here to lift ourselves up and rise higher so that we can take action and so that we can use our voice, so that we can shine our light, so that we can be the best mom, the best wife, the best people that we can be for ourselves and for the people that we love the most. And so by me sharing this with you, I hope that you feel like if something is going on for you right now at this moment, that you're like, I'm feeling like I can't do it. I hope that you would take a second to pause and say to yourself, is that true? Look to the past of all the times that you have done hard things, creating new beliefs and taking action from that new belief. So after I got done writing the chapter and I felt good about it and I felt confident about the message that came through, the message that I get to share, it came time to turn in this work of art. It came time for me to release it and let it go. And guess what I wanted to do? I wanted to hold on. I held on for two full days. I was dragging my foot, dragging both of my feet. I didn't want to look at it. I didn't want to even think about it because there was still a part of me in fear. There was still a part of me that was thinking, who are you to do that? Who are you to turn in this chapter? It's not good. And so for two days, I played the game of procrastination. I was dragging my feet. And on the day that I was to turn it on or turn it in, I had to sit and get really present with myself and ask, like, why are you procrastinating? And in my stillness, in my listening, dropped in out of my head, Tony Robbins says it best. He says, if you're in your head, you're dead. So you have to get out of your head and get into your body. And for me, the best way for me to do that is through stillness and a meditation practice. So I got clear with myself and I got still with myself and asking, why am I procrastinating? And the message that came through was, it's not going to be well received. The message that came through is people aren't going to like this. It's not going to make sense. And I had to hold that part of myself and tell that part of myself that we're doing this for a reason. And that belief is not true. That belief is not going to serve me here. And in my meditation, a beautiful message came through for me that This is not mine to keep. This is not mine to hold on to. This message was put down, was created out of nothing for somebody who's going to need it, for somebody that's going to receive it and it's going to be powerful and transformational for them. It's not yours to keep. Art was meant to be shared. And that really gave me some power to say, yes, this is not mine to keep. I have done the work. I have said yes, and I have done it, and now it's time to let it go. And so the mind drama is going to come at every step, at each yes, at each step that you take towards creating that business, towards doing something different in your life, you're going to get pushback from the old beliefs, and you have to keep catching them. You have to keep being aware of them. And that awareness piece is so huge for two days. (laughs) For two days, I was a procrastination and I was aware that, of what I was doing, but it took two full days for me to be with myself, for me to soothe myself, for me to get in the right headspace to be able to continue moving forward. So I had to have empathy for that part of me. I had to show compassion. I had to show grace. And then I had to take the courage 
get the courage to keep moving forward, knowing that that is part of the process. This is part of the human life that we signed up for. When we came into this human existence, we said we were going to try new things. We said we were going to do things that we've never done before. And that is going to require courage. That's going to require us to grow. That's going to require us to push ourselves and expand to a bigger capacity every day. And now that I'm sitting here recording this and I have done the work, it is turned in, it is halfway done, it's at the editor, I can tell you that this journey has transformed me in such a bigger way. It has expanded me in such a bigger way to know that when we trust ourselves to do the thing that we say we're going to do, when we surrender to something that is so much bigger than us, that magic can happen. And it happens every time I say yes to something. Every time I say a full body yes, and I release that control and I surrender to it, knowing that it's going to work out, knowing that I'm held and I'm supported, knowing that I don't have to do it alone, then magic happens. And so if you're today listening to this podcast episode and you're thinking to yourself, I really want to do this, but... I'm going to empower you to turn that butt into an and. I really want to do this and I will find out how. I really want to do this and I've done it before. I really want to do this and it's going to impact so many people. I really want to do this and. Changing your ands, changing your butts to an and gives you a more empowering belief. It really starts with your belief because when you make those powerful statements, then you take action from feeling that empowerment in your body versus feeling like I want to, but I can't. That's a hard stop. That's not going to get you to the place where you want to go, but saying I want to, and I know someone who can support me. That instantly makes you feel lighter, instantly makes you feel like it's possible. We want to live in the space of it's possible because it is. All things are possible for you if you believe that it's possible. If you believe that you too can open your hands and say yes to the thing that's on your heart, knowing that it was put on your heart for a reason, it starts with that. And so now as I wait for the editor's feedback, I am in so much gratitude to the parts of me that said yes, to the part of me that was in resistance, to the part of me that was in procrastination. Because all of it was required to get me to the place where I am now. And I wanted to share this story with you, whether you're writing a book, whether you're starting a business, whether you're starting potty trading, like that's the journey that we're on right now. Today is day one of pull-ups for Everett. And I'm just like, it's day one of a journey and it's not always going to be easy. It's going to be hard sometimes and that's okay. And I know how to do this. And I can get help and I can keep going because I know at the other side is going to be a potty trained boy, (laughs) right? And so when we change our butts to ands, when we empower ourselves to believe that it's possible, it becomes easier. It becomes fun. And we get to keep saying yes to ourselves. We get to keep saying yes to our lives. And I want you to say yes to you. I want you to look into your heart, look into your soul and say, what is it that I want more than anything? And I want you to give yourself permission to say yes, whatever it is, you deserve it. You are worthy. And I'm here to support you every step of the way. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for coming to the Make Life Fun Show to share, yeah, to share what you are going through. Like, I would love to hear from you. This is not a one-way show where I just speak to you and you're just out there. Like, I love when I get messages from you guys. I love reading your reviews of the value that you're getting. So please don't stop. Continue to let me know that this is well-received. Continue to let me know that you're finding value here. And I look forward to the next episode. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.